Hello and welcome to another Roland Gaia or any subtractive synthesis tutorial. Today we are building a piano sound and of course to build a piano sound on a synthesizer is very very difficult and basically impossible as far as recreating a a full concert grand piano. But we're going to get as close as we can today. But since it is a piano that we're building, I have MIDI cabled in from my 88 key piano into the Roland. So I'll be playing the 88 key piano and you will be hearing uh, the Roland reproducing the sound. I'm going to play this sound and uh, show you a little bit about the sound and then we're going to erase it and we're going to build the sound step by step as we have before in the other videos. So first we have a piano sound that I was able to recreate within about an octave and a half get pretty close to a piano and then as I get farther away from it the uh, it gets less and less sounding like a piano. stay within this octave, I've, I've gotten close. Now, the filter control, of course, can change the piano sound completely. By just turning the slope down to the smaller dB slope, we go from... We go to a little thinner sounding. And the, and the other parts. But as we build the sound, you'll find that there's there are more to it than just those little bit of controls to, to try and create this piano sound. So let's get to work and we'll build this piano sound. Okay, so we're back sitting in front of the Roland now. And this is, and I have this set at, this is middle C right now, middle C on the piano. going to erase this sound and we're going to start over. And before I erase it I'm going to return my controls back to a neutral setting.
And we're going to initialize or erase this by holding down the shift key and right. Piano is gone. So now we have to recreate it again. So before I started building my piano, I went through all the waveforms to find out which one which one sounds most like a piano. And I chose our, our pulse width square wave. We have three variations of those. So I started with this one. And that's the wave I'm going to choose. Now with the Roland, of course, we got the advantage of three tones or we're going to have three synthesizers working together. So, my first tone, I'm going to make a little on the, on the soft and bassy side and then brighten up a little bit on these other two. On an actual piano, the, when the hammer hits the strings, there's actually three strings that are tuned. So, we do have the advantage now of having three tones to equal our three strings. So that's a little bit of help instead of using just one to get close to a piano. But we're going to get as close as we can with this first one. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to the envelope so we can make this sound like a piano. If I bring all the envelopes down, of course you get just the click. And as I bring the decay up, now we're getting the piano sound. Now to, for playability, I'm going to bring the sustain up a little bit. Normally, not, I'm going to exaggerate first. As, a, as the sound decays out, there's a little bit left in there. But we're bringing that way, way down. So as the sound fades out, I think it just gives it more playability, not having the sound completely drop out. And then on the release, when you, re when you release a key on a piano, of course it's a staccato sound, like this, but it's not that sharp of a release. So I'm going to give just a little bit of release. Now the release, of course, is when you let go of the key, how long does it take for it to actually stop? But we're going to give just, again, just a little bit. just to smooth out that, that release a little bit. So it's not that sharp. And that pretty much takes care of the dynamics of the piano. From here on out, the only thing we might adjust now is the rate of decay. Because when you add the piano sustain switch, to play these sounds together, this decay rate becomes very important. Depends on how much of a sustain you have on your piano. So the switch of the sustain will determine the playability. And we'll check that out when we're pretty much got the tone built. So our middle C has the dynamics of the piano, it just uh, doesn't sound too good yet. Now the first thing I'm going to do is extend this slope from the 12 dB to the 24. And it's a, it's a, so as, as the filter cut off, 
works, it's a longer slope. And it just ends up to be more, I think, more musical for the piano. So we're going to start with the low frequency, or the uh, uh, low pass filter. Now we're going to take some of that buzz. Now we're going to use resonance to add a little detail in there. Now these adjustments are so fine between sounding like a piano and sounding like a synthesizer. Now of course with the pulse width, with the uh, with the square pulse width wave, these controls become active. So we do have additional tonal characteristics we can use, and we're going to use these on these other two tones, but on this first tone I'm going to leave the pulse width controls off. And I want this sound to be a little bass here. We're going to pick up the brightness in the other two tones. So we're getting pretty close to a piano sound now. So if we only had one synthesizer, we'd have to work with this, but fortunately we got three and that's going to help us out quite a bit. Now, being a synthesizer, all the tones are absolutely perfect waves, and of course with instruments, there's no perfection in the waves. They have all these little, little dips in there called harmonics, and that's what gives them all their character. So again, we're going to use the filter envelopes as a way to add just a little bit of extra character to this tone. So there's our piano. What I want to do is, as the piano, as this decays off, as the piano fades off, it's the same tone as it fades off. I want it to fade off into a duller sound. So as it fades off, I want a duller sound. So I start with my envelope depth. And I'm going to bring up attack and decay. I can hear this artifact at the end. As I release the key, it's making that sound because I need I need my release on my filter to get rid of that sound because of my release over here. So there's the difference. You got that yeah at the end of the key when I release the key, you're gonna get rid of that right away with with the release of the filter. Now we're gonna bring these up so that we get that there's the tone before. Now, I want it to fade to a little duller tone. Another very subtle change, but at least I got more character in the sound. The sound changes over time. As it decays out, I get a, I get a, a duller, duller sound. Now, since we're starting with a fairly dull sounding piano, it's not going to make much difference here, but when we go to the other two tones, these filter envelopes will make a bigger difference because we'll fade to that duller tone. That'll give the, that'll give the piano a, a, a bright attack, but it'll give a warmer sound as you hold on to the chord. And the next part is very difficult to do. And we're building an 88 key piano, and we got a 37 note piano keyboard. So if you if this is all you have to work with, it'll be very difficult to, to try and... Well, well, we'll work with the 37 now instead of, instead of my long 88 key over here.
the key follow becomes very important. This is the key follow on the filter. Because as we go lower and lower on this, it doesn't sound much like a piano anymore down there. I mean, you're getting this really gritty, yeah, really gritty sound. So with the key follow, if I turn that, if I move that grit towards the top, with just a little bit of key follow, I go from this sound to this sound. So I can get rid of that, I can get rid of that synthesizer twang or grit by, by moving it. Now as I move this, it will change change the brightness somewhat of my middle C, but not much. So I'm going back to neutral. You can even you can even hear it at this octave. There's off on. You should be able to hear the softness difference here. And it doesn't change the middle C much at all. As I turn this, you can see it makes quite a bit of change. So all, we're, all I'm doing is moving this a, a, couple, a couple of notches to smooth out the bottom end. our first piano tone. And it sounds a little bit like a piano. And turn that cut off a little more. this first one to be a little bassy. Now we're going to do a tone copy and we're going to take this same piano, copy it to number two, and I'm going to change the variation of this square pulse width to that and I'm going to change the pulse width. So that's a little more nasal sounding. And going to do a tone copy of that to the third one. And we're going to change the wave again to that variation of the pulse width change this and change the pulse width again. So now here are our three middle C's. So I have a Slightly different variation of our middle of our pulse width on each tone layer. Now I'm going to do a detune. The detune is going to help um, make it sound like a like like a, like a piano because no piano is ever in perfect tune. So again, we want to take the perfection of the synthesizer away from it, and we're going to tune, tone two down a little bit. We're going to tone this one up a little bit. So now 
now we got these two waves working together a little bit. Now here's all three. And there's our three waves working together. And now I'm going to add the sustain pedal. don't like the playability as a piano with a sustain pedal, we're going to put all three edits on and now the rate of decay will make, make quite a bit of difference when you add the sustain pedal. For brighter pianos or duller pianos, now's the time. And that is our piano. Now we're going to liven this piano up with effects. I'm going to start with the pitch shifter to, to give it that doubling effect. So again, we're not shifting the pitch. These controls go to the 12, both level and control one go to the 12 o'clock position. a little bit. And also to open it up a little bit, I'm going to go back to these last two tones or to, the, uh, to the tones and do a panning. I'm going to give it a panning for the, for the sound because you, as you sit in front of a piano, the lower sounds come from the left and the higher sounds from the right. So we're going to give this a stereo piano effect now by using the pan control. And the pan control is done by, again, holding down the shift key and moving the detune knob back and forth. So holding down the shift key and you move the detune to the right or left is your panning knob. So with our lowest frequency, that one's going to be panned to the left. tone. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit, about two, two lines over. And on this one we're going to pan to the right, about two lines, two, three lines over to the right. Now when we get them all together, yep, I've uh, accidentally detuned these. 
So here's how you correct a mistake on the detune. Turn them all on. Move the detune back to zero. And now we're going to de re detune to. to and redune, re detune three. So now with the with the stereo panning we just did, we it gave it space. So we've taken a little bit of the muddiness out of it by doing the stereo panning. Now let's put the sustain pedal on and And if the sustain is too long for you, make sure all the controls are turned on, all the edit lights are on, and use the decay. There's a very short decay. This is what you would get with a cheap piano, a very short decay. Even with the sustain pedal, you don't get much blending of notes. As it goes up, and we're going to open this up a little more. We're going to use a Delay, very little about mono delay. Just enough delay to, to uh, add a little thickness to it, and then we want a little re we want a little reverb on this. And the reverb will give you the room reverb from the piano. And now we'll put the sustain pedal on it again. Like I said in the beginning, as we as we get farther away from middle C, it gets harder and harder to keep it sounding like a piano. it's decaying out very fast for a piano but it depends on playability again your amplitude envelopes are used for playability so we're going to do a save by right patch number you're working on right again Here you can tune your piano if you, all these are on. By using the cutoff. But you can also just turn the slope off and get a different sound piano too.
Kind of a more stringy sounding piano. And as you turn the slope off again, you can... So at this point, it's kind of like voicing your piano. Using the cutoff, the slope, and resonance to voice your piano in uh, any way you want. As a, uh, I don't think you're ever going to... I don't think you're ever going to use this as a solo piano. Uh, I've seen professionals try to put together a piano on a synth too, and uh, I haven't heard them come much closer, but as an intermediate uh, programmer, this is the best I can do for you. Hopefully somebody out there has got some better ideas to make it a better piano, but uh, one of the features you can do is we can change it into a honky-tonk panel piano by just doing more detuning now it sounds like more of an upright And then, of course, you can always just hit your button and go back to your original save version. And that is the lesson today on making a piano. Thank you, and see you next time.